In this episode of Cars Plus, we're going to show you how to take modern clear coat failure, which you've all seen, back to a factory finish easily, simply, at home, without spending a large amount of money. As you notice, we're using my 2007 Pontiac Solstice, and we're doing this on the top of the driver's side rear view mirror. Stay tuned and learn how to do this easy, simple, and with not a lot of money. Your first step is going to be to mask off those items you do not want to get dirt, sanding residue, dirty water, or paint on when you're doing the project. In this case, I'm using 3M yellow automotive masking tape. Here I'm using another 3M product. This is a thin liner that works perfect for going around sharp corners. It's a vinyl tape made by 3M. You can get that online very easily. It's about a sixteenth of an inch wide. The only purpose here is to set a perfect edge because there is a piece of clear plastic there known as a clear bra protecting that portion of the rear view mirror. Now we'll fill in the area with our masking tape, our yellow masking tape from 3M because that allows us to cover a large area. Now, if we could have used the 3M masking tape clear to the edge, but it's much harder to do that than it is to use the 3M vinyl liner tape on the edge, as I showed you. Be sure you get everything covered very well. And again, I really suggest the 3M tape. I don't get anything for telling you that. It just works better than anything else I've used. Here you're going to see that I'm starting to mask off other areas on the car that are not going to be painted. Be sure you do a careful job at that. Next up, you're going to see that I'm going to grab some thin 3mm plastic and put that all over the car as you see it's now pictured. 3mm plastic like you get at the hardware store. The thinnest plastic is really all you need. There you'll see I have a bucket of water with some Dawn dish soap that I'm adding to it. Dawn dish soap works really well for this. Other dish soaps might. I always use Dawn. I like its ability to remove excess oils. And you saw I was showing you a 320 grit sandpaper. And here you see that is a used but useful piece of Scotch-Brite cloth that we're going to use also. Now the Scotch-Brite works really good for adding a key to those parts of the rear view mirror that don't need to be sanded heavily. You need a key to cause the paint to stick to the current clear coat. The clear coat's going to be too slippery if we don't add keying to it. The keying is accomplished, as I said, with the Scotch-Brite pad. They come in several different colors. This just happens to be a piece of gray that I have handy that's perfect for a repaint. So I'll go over the whole thing with the Scotch-Brite to start with. Remember not to miss any spots with the Scotch-Brite to ensure full paint adhesion when you're done with the rest of the steps. Now we're going to move on to our 320 grit sandpaper. That's a wet dry sandpaper. Again, I prefer the 3M sandpaper. It seems to work better. You can use what you want, but I really do prefer the 3M. It's been soaked in that soapy water solution and folded over about four times. Because I am working on a curved surface, it really isn't the type of thing to put on a sanding block. You are better off with it in your hand and about four times fold over, and you start sanding the entire area that has the flaw. The objective here when sanding is to remove the edge and totally feather it out from the area that is painted through to the area that is painted with clear coat. You notice that I did use a nice microfiber towel to wipe off in between. 
You will find that this will be a series of doing this step multiple times of sanding, and that is wet sanding of course, and wiping it off with your microfiber towel until eventually you can tell no transition between the painted portion and the clear coat portion. Of course, clear coats of paint, but realistically, that's the way I'm designating the difference between the color or base coat and the clear coat. You wanna remove any edge in that area, otherwise you will notice where you have done the repair. So work at this, you'll probably spend as much time as I did, about 30 minutes to do an area this size. Keep working till every imperfection is removed. In between, while you don't see it, I constantly rinse off that sandpaper in the soapy water. It's another reason we masked off certain areas. We didn't want to get all that dirty residue throughout the rest of the mirror assembly. You'll notice I feel with a gloved hand that actually does let you know a little better whether it's smooth or not. Here I'm showing you we use prep all on a paper towel. We're going to clean everything. That's even after we have used all of that Dawn dish soap water. We want to have no residue at all of wax, etc. And I can guarantee you at this point in the life of this car, there would be wax residue on that rear view mirror if I didn't do that. Next up, you see I'm using a tack rag and taking off any lint, etc., that occurred because of the paper towel work. Now you can see I'm spraying it with plastic adhesion promoter. Yep, that's exactly what you want in this case, adhesion promoter. The reason for that is that will ensure even with all the sanding that everything is going to stick for sure. So use it, adhesion promoter as I'm showing I'm doing here. It's a series of short blasts. You don't want to slather this stuff on. And you want a couple of coats. I believe it's about three minutes apart. Look on the can to make sure. As you saw, I'm using Duplicolor paint in this case. This is a lacquer based paint. And yes, you can use the lacquer based paint underneath a clear coat. It'll work just fine. This paint is matched by using the information from the bin and information on the car. You can get exact matches for recent cars in the Duplicolor system. You can also have paints, of course, matched if the car is older and not currently available as a spray can like this. But honestly, this is the best solution for this car. And don't think of this as a one coat application minimum two coats, most likely three. And again, you notice I'm not slathering it on. I'm putting it on in light little bursts to ensure they a nice even coverage. Now you're looking at what we're going to use to do the clear coat. We're going to use lacquer thinner. We're going to use a clear coat. In this case, you could use Deltron. I happen to have some clear in a can. I'm going to use Deltron hardener. I recommend a slow hardener. You're also going to want some anti-fisheye additive which is in the one can there multicolors looks like a rainbow you're also going to want to have a little xylol why because we're going to slow everything down and you're going to want to be able to mix this all up and then strain it now you notice we used in this case two ladles of our clear we're going to use the right amount of hardener remember i said use a slow hardener follow the instructions on the materials to use the right ratio for the hardener and the clear you are using. Once you have those in there, don't forget you want to add additional thinner the way we're suggesting to do it. In this case, we're going to add, watch what we're going to add here. We're going to add a ladle of lacquer thinner. So that's about a 50% reduction of what's in the mixing cup. And now we're going to add a little bit more. We're going to add about a half a ladle of xylol. Purpose of the xylol or xylene is to slow the paint down even harder, even longer from getting hard. 
and that will make a smoother finish. That's why we're going to use the xylene. And even though I didn't show it, a little cap of fisheye remover or preventer was put in there mixed in also. Now we're going to strain it into our gun. You notice I'm using a full-size gun. You want to have a good full-size gun so you can get a really nice even pattern. Now in this case we're going to spray in the garage here. We're going to use about 60 pounds on the line and that goes with the gun I am using which is an HBLP gun. We have the bottom of the garage door open and a big fan in this garage that sucks everything out. Notice I'm doing small bursts again from all directions using the large gun to paint this. This is one time you want the coat to be wet. You do not want to have the coat to be put on dry and so it is going to be a wet coat and you're going to want about two wet coats of this usually about 15 minutes apart but be sure to verify that with the clear coat you are using. In my case it are made 15 minutes apart. And you see it takes a while for me to go around and do it. Short bursts all over the place. And the objective is to get enough paint on there so flow out, but not too much where you'll get a run. That is where you gonna sometimes practice on a scrap piece of material. It is approximately the same angle so you can see what it's like to spray with it. Here you can see what it looks like once we've completed spraying. Looks very, very nice. As I said, there's really two coats you want to put in there. And you notice when we take everything off, there's the completed repair. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Visit Custom Replications. See you later.